so this talk will be will consist of uh, two parts and the first one will primarily serve as a quick introduction to epidemiological concepts so what is epidemiology what distinguishes epidemiology from other health related disciplines like medical care what are the so called five w's and why are they important and is it all about causality so is epidemiology just causality or do we also have other goals of research and part two um, will be presented by uh, frank as mentioned will be on mathematical modeling and of vaccine preventable diseases as an interdisciplinary or iterative process he will talk on key epidemiologic input data different types of models yeah present you the classical sir model and will end with uh, some extensions so i hope i don't forget anything so first of all what is epidemiology if you check the the literature you will find a bunch of definitions on epidemiology all of them are slightly different different nevertheless all of them are somehow similar in a way that they that they define epidemiology as the science of understanding causes and distributions of population health or that epidemiology is about learning to ask good questions measure population health uh, to compare aspects of population health again between two or more groups and last but not least that epidemiology is the study of the distribution and determinants of disease frequency or more simply the study of occurrence of illness so altogether they are talk or they define epidemiology as population health so it's not on uh, individuals it's not on uh, estimating individual effects it's more on the group level on the population level so compared to medicine or clinical research epidemiology serves as a cornerstone for public health so we as epidemiologists really try to understand what's going on in defined populations rather than observing one individual over time or making assumptions just on one individual so in medical care typical questions that may arise uh, may be whether to treat a patient or an individual with treatment a or b to treat them now or later or even to stop all the treatment whereas in epidemiology we try to provide an evidence base for public health action and for instance whether to implement a vaccination program for which population groups should that vaccination program be implemented and another question that may arise with what frequencies so uh, should should there be a uh, yeah a seasonal pattern so let's start with what is a model actually right so it's a simplified representation of reality. Many of you will be familiar with an animal model. So on the left-hand side, example one is actually a sketch of a model, well, of an animal, and in this, in, in this instance, a mouse. So it's on the meta level, a model of a model. But really, we use uh, the animal models for to represent humans, right? So and example two is a mathematical model, so which, has, which is serving a similar function. So essentially, we use mathematical models to uh, represent humans, obviously, and populations. The distinction is that, as you can see, there's a textbook definition, mathematical models, they use symbols and equations that allow the formal analysis and logical formulation. And I think it's good to bear in mind, so I'm highlighting that models should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. So this is really entertaining the idea of model parsimoniousness. So essentially meaning you want as few parameters uh, as possible to describe the core mechanistics that you're actually interested in with your model. This is a, 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 like an, a sketch, uh, the overview of what does mathematical modeling in practice now mean? So how do we actually come from these very simple ideas to public health advice? This is, I think, a nice sketch if we start in the top left corner of essentially asking policy questions. So this is the starting point, right? There's a, a relevant policy question. It is being given to the modelers, so they should take care of it. So what we do is what you see in the top middle, the available data. We start looking around. What can we actually use to inform the question to provide some answers? And we also go on the top right hand side with scientific understanding. So the data obviously was collected in a certain way. It comes from certain systems, and we know 
how, for example, diseases should work. So we can use all of the scientific understanding to then start building a model. We can fit the model to the data. And if it doesn't work well, we will essentially validate, calibrate it, adapt it, and it's a circle. So it's an iterative process where we essentially will continue doing this all over until we can start on the bottom right producing scientific insights. We can highlight where additional data is needed, so data gaps that may essentially arise in f further data collections. Um, and of course, this is not a, a goal in itself, so we actually want to give policy advice. So on the bottom left-hand side, you see essentially the, the big uh, policy advice or the big question or the big aim of this whole exercise. And stemming from it, they can essentially become new policy questions. So we are back to this being a cycle and an iterative process and very much interdisciplinary. So I thought I point out that this is obviously not just a few mathematicians or modelers sitting isolated in a room and building this, but we really need insights from practitioners, from clinicians, from people who know the data, who know how the data have been collected, who know the biases in the data, who essentially know all what Matthias was also pointing out in his first part, uh, like the first part of this talk. That's a still a bit like abstract. Let's maybe make it a little bit more concrete. What does this now actually mean for modeling vaccination effects? Neugierig? Den kompletten Vortrag finden Sie im Intranet der GMDS. Einfach anmelden und den Menüpunkt Bild und Videomaterial anklicken. Werden Sie Mitglied in der GMDS.